Hello guys, welcome to Easy TV Presents Tech View, another episode. Um, this episode I'll show you guys uh, the delegate uh, delegate permissions for domain join uh, computer object. And also I'll show you delegating um, administration by using the OU object. So why this is important for you. So as a administrator, if you work as a senior system admin, or if you work as a uh, system admin, um, Active Directory or Active Directory administrator or senior administrator. In that case, maybe you have to assign some groups of people, some group of um, employees. You have to provide them dele delegate uh, permission based on the OU. So, for example, help desk, right? So if you work as an ad active degree administrator or a senior administrator or senior system admin, your job will be to provide access to other people, right? So how are you gonna delegate that permissions to the other people? So how you can distribute it, right? So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So let me share my screen and just give me one second. All right, so for example, if you see, this is my active directory environment. I'm just going to explain here first and then I'll move to practical session. And hopefully you will guys you guys will enjoy this session because this is very important for all system admin. So all those are uh, all the uh, yellow one is a container. So you can call as a container or a folder look like a folder, but in Active Directory it calls OU organizational unit. So each yellow one is an organizational unit. You can call it as a container also. So it depends on the name, you can have different, different. you can create a sub container, sub OU, as much as you want, you can create it, you can delete it if you have a permission. So in here I have user accounts, the parents folder, under the parents user accounts, I have finance stuff, IT stuff, and then under the IT stuff, I have administrative accounts, service accounts, standard accounts, right? And then marketing stuff, administrative accounts, standard accounts, sales stuff, Admin accounts, standard accounts. So all those are OU and sub OU, and then user groups. And then under the user groups, there is a multiple uh, sub OU. And under the sub OU, we have some groups, right? So I'll show you guys step by step how you're gonna create those. I have created all those groups. It's just pretty simple. I'll show you one example. And that example will prove that I will I created all those things the same way. So all those are users and all those are groups. So just for giving an example, so this is a user called admin David Jr. So David is the person name, he's an employee, and uh, he joined as a junior system admin, right? So just to uh, just for you guys understand, I mentioned junior at the end of his name. So actually his user account is a David01. So if it is the admin, so I use for defining the admin, I use ADM. So ADM David01, the user account, and this is the name of uh, the guy. It's admin David Jr. So I'll show you practically, then you'll understand better. So. After creating this user, then I created a group named System Admin Junior and I join this user to this group. So that means this now this user is a member of this group. And then I have created another group called Endpoint Management. So Endpoint Management means Windows 10, Windows 11 and also other uh, devices you can call it as an endpoint management, right? Endpoint device. So 
the system admin junior maybe they're gonna work with workstation right so all the workstation can be considered as an endpoint so or you can say help desk also you can consider them as an endpoint so they day to day they're gonna work with workstation um so if you want to add this one with this group that means you can make these groups is a member of this group so that means this is the parent group and this one is a mem member of this group and this one is a, this user is a member of this group that means now since this one is a member of this and this one is a member of this that means this one also a member of this so if you have a more sub, more sub, anyway, the parents has all of them, right? So the same thing, here is a server management and system admin senior and admin side senior. So Saif is a senior admin user account and he's a member of system admin senior group. And this system admin senior group is a member of server management group. And also RDP remote desktop group. So uh, system admin senior and system admin junior is the member, both groups is the member of RDP group. RDP is another group, right? It's just simple a group. So I just added, I'll show you 100%, I'll show you how to add it, right? So just for understanding, so this group is a member of this group. This group is a member of this group. So now uh, and i will show you actually so if you assign if you assign this group if you assign this group as a rdp permission to any server that means what whoever is belongs to this group it can be some multiple groups and multiple groups can have multiple users so all users will have rdp privileged access on that dedicated server where this group is assigning as a RDP access. So that's how you can provide different different levels of permissions, right? So this is just a group and users I discuss. But what is the delegating user delegate delegate permissions? So delegate permissions, I'll show you. For the users, I'll show you for the domain join computer object or for the groups. So let's get started. But before I started, I want to show you another thing, which is, um, let's say, if I assign endpoint management, this, this one as a delegated user here, uh, where any OU, whatever you want. So for example, oh, there is no computer object showing here. So I'll show you the computer object. Let me let me take the computer object. Here's the computer object. So server and object. Okay, let's. I'm just taking a snapshot, a screenshot of it, and okay, let's say one second within short time. I'll be able to show you the computer object. I'm just cutting this one, you know. So I need active directory users and computers up to here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And here, maybe I can put it somewhere here. Okay. Let's have this users group maybe here and this one i can put it a little bit down okay 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 all right so now it's more it's more clear okay so if you add this group okay, move it a little bit here okay if you add now as a delegation, what are you gonna, how are you gonna provide the delegation? So you have to right click on the computer object, then delegate control, and then 
add this user on where? Okay, it's just X and V, okay. So this user, if you add it here as a, on the endpoint management OU, assign as a delegate uh, user group, and then you have to add some permissions like what this group can do. So if you assign, okay, these groups can do um, add a computer object or create a user, delete a user. It depends on you how, what kind of permissions you want to provide, what kind of delegation you want to provide. So in based on that, based on that, the user belongs to this. So the, this group, this one is a member of this group, right? So when you assign this one, that means this group, this group also has a permission here. And if this group has a permission here, that means well, whoever the user belongs to this group, all of them has a permission on this OU. That's what it means. So let's get started and see how we can assign practically. So, All right. Okay. So in this, in here, let's say uh, this is the OU, right? You can create any OU right now. In, this is my Active Directory machine. Uh, this Active Directory machine, I joined, I logged in as an administrator, which uh, the administrator has a superpower. So in this Active Directory, I have a superpower. So I can create anything because I'm the super user and I'm the senior, I'll say for example, I'm the senior Active Directory administrator. Now I want to provide some permissions to other groups who is, who is working in IT like infrastructure. So say so that's why I I have I have created some OU. So the OU creation is very simple. If you go to the new, you see here. If you go to the organizational unit, you'll be able to create an organizational unit. If you create if you click group, you're gonna you will be able to create a group. If you go to the computer, you will be able to create a computer object. So whatever you want, you can do that. But to organize the active directory, I have created a separate computer object. And under this computer object, I have some multiple sub uh, OU, and then under multiple under this sub OU, I have another multiple sub OU, just for organizing the Active Directory. Right. So all the user belong like will go to this under this accounts section, and all the computer object will go here. Depends on what kind of server is this. You see here, Windows Server, and then development, production, right. So this is the way you can distribute all of them, right? Okay, anyway. So if you want, you can move any server anywhere. Just move like this, you can move it. You can move here. Is it because I have the administrator privilege access because I'm the uh, domain admin. That's why. But if any user is not a domain user, then how they can do? So for understanding, for understanding the, for understanding user groups, groups permissions, and I have a separate video. If you go to my channel and go to the, click on my channel logo and then go to the videos, then you want to see all the videos. So this is the uh, Active Directory users and computers. I describe in this video like clearly how you can create a user, how we can create a, a groups. So if you don't know how to create it, just watch this video. And also to in this video, I'm gonna use my jump machine because uh, the user I created, I'm not gonna give them to log in Active Directory. So what they where are they gonna log in? They're gonna log in the jump machine. And that jump machine has options to 
uh, see the Active Directory group policy and everything from the jump machine. So if you don't know how you can add the server, uh, remote server role, add to this uh, jump machine or how to create a jump machine, if you don't know, please watch this video. It will help you to create a jump machine and also add our set, which is called remote server administration tools installation. So in this video, you, you can learn both things like deploying a jump machine and install the uh, remote server administ administration tools, which is called our set. And then when you log into the jump machine, you'll be able to, whatever you are, you are able to see on the Active Directory, user and computers and everything, when you go to the server manager, you're gonna see the same same stuff from your jump machine. So anyway, I'm going to show you one user then. So IT stub under the administrative account and the standard account you see here. So I have a site senior, I have a site admin. So what username I use for this, go to the properties, go to the accounts, you see here, site 01, just simple, it's a standard user. And admin site, go to the properties, account, you see here, ADM site 01. So I just added ADM, which means administrator site. But if you check the member of, it's just, I just added with the group, but anyway, if you want to remove it, it doesn't matter. Apply and okay. So, okay. So now see this site, if you go to the properties and go to the member of, this site is a member of domain user. And this ADM site, ADM site is the member of same, same thing, right? So that means this user name, account name look like it's an administrative administrator account, but that user is not get the power yet. So this user and this user is the same still now, but it's two different container. That's true. Think about when you born, your parents uh, named, your parents named you Dr. something, Dr. XYZ. It not means that you went to the medical college or you passed the medical, uh, right? So that, so when you pass the medical uh, college, then you complete the degree of medical, then you will be a doctor, right? But if your parents named you when you born, you are a doctor, doctor something, DR something, right? That means DR is your name, right? So same thing, I just created two user here, but later on I have a plan to make him more powerful. That means I have to add this group to some, provide some permission, some delegation, right? So how are you gonna provide that? So if you go the user and they say add, and also I have created here a group. You see system admin, a system admin senior, system admin junior, system admin manager, endpoint management, all these are groups. So groups is pretty simple. If you click here and just right click new, and then you can say a group and you can create a group, whatever you want. And okay, right? So it's created. Group is created, right? So I'm going to delete it. So cre creation, creating a group is pretty simple. And user, how are you gonna create a user? So, so any user, you just, you have to make a plan, that's it, nothing else. Click new and then go to the user and then you can say uh, admin something, Stive, uh something, whatever you want, right? Anything. And then what should be the, um, what should be the user? Say ADM, as ADM, SAIF02 or something, right? So that means in future, you're gonna add more power on this, but right now it's gonna be simple as a standard user. So standard, when you're creating a user, everything is standard, no power, with no power, right? Everything is just simple power. But why we are creating in two different OU? Because it's nothing. So what the user, you can say anything, you can say anything here, click next and provide the password 
and here and then they never expire or maybe this one provide the password whatever you want provide the password whatever you want all right okay password not match anyway you have to do something like this and then you'll be able to create a user so same way i have created david junior david uh, saif senior and so this is standard user and same thing david junior admin david senior admin so i just added the difference is in here if you go to the properties you're going to see the account only 501 is the account name right at els.com it's a simple regular user standard user and this admin senior one i just added adm in the beginning that's it nothing else but still both user is the same standard so how are you gonna make different you have to add some group so if you make this user as a member of some other group that means and that if that group is assigned to some other ou that means now this user is getting power getting power right so add with system check i have some multiple groups here senior right added okay okay so now now this user is added with the system admin senior group so now if the senior group is a member of something else if you go to the say for example if you go to the uh, what is it called server management right server management right click go to properties and member nothing member of nothing add member of so which one system admin senior right s y s system check it senior right okay okay so i just added right so now system admin senior is the member of server management group right so that means what if you somewhere if you add server management that means automatically system admin or senior also going to be add and not only that the users is belongs to this group also going to be member of this group right and automatically get the power so apply and okay and system admin junior so system admin junior add okay let's see who is the member of this go to the properties member so david junior is already not not david junior system admin junior is uh actually administrative account let me add the administrative account add adm david okay so now adm david is a member of this group right and junior and now this group i'm going to add on the endpoint management so endpoint management properties member of rdp group and add add system junior one right junior so system admin junior now system admin junior okay now system admin junior is the member system admin junior is the member of system admin junior is the member of endpoint management so that means if you sign at endpoint management system admin junior will be automatically added and then whoever is belongs to system admin junior those users will also will be the member of this so this is just uh, what is called nested kind of permission. 
Now, uh, I have another group called RDP, uh, RDP group, okay. Go to the properties, member of, let's see, remove that, so remove it, add, say, endpoint, endpoint, okay. So what is, what is the endpoint is, endpoint. Endpoint management, okay. So add endpoint management and then server management. Add server version server management, okay. Okay, so we know already system admin senior is the member of server management and server now server management is the member of RDP. So that means for if any group or anywhere I assign RDP group, that means I'm providing access to not only RDP group, it, because or I, I'm, I'm providing permission to these two groups, endpoint management and endpoint server management groups. So all both groups will have permission where I assign RDP group, right? And not only that, whoever is belongs to this endpoint management, they will have also access. So that means who is the belongs to this? System admin, so endpoint management is a um, system admin junior is a member of system admin management and also system admin senior is a member of server management. That means whoever the user is belongs to this one and whoever the user of this one, all of them, all the users will have access as a RDP. That's what it means. So if I log into one of the server, I can show you the jump one. So say David01, how David have RDP access. I, this, the, these tools actually help me to do the RDP. I don't need to use the built-in RDP, which is called R, RDP, uh, Remote Desktop Connections. I am not using this one because it's painful because you have to use individual window. So these tools, which is called AMP Remote NG, help me to do the RDP, so like multiple to um, open multiple screen uh, and as a tab here. So jump machine, I'm using admin ADM David01. How I'm able to do that? Because before I log in, do the RDP on this, I log in this machine as an administrator and then I assign this group on the RDP access. That's why I have access here. Let me show you how. So I logged in first as an administrator. Okay, now it's not happening. Why? So RDP group. Okay, let's 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 log in as a administrator. Because administrator has a superpower. This is the domain administrator. So log into here as a administrator. Okay, administrator at ELS.com, right? So I'm logging here. So in this video, I'm showing RDP, I'm showing uh, delegation control for domain join, delegation control for user creation and deletion. So all those things I am sh showing. So right, this is the first thing I logged in in my job machine as a uh, domain administrator and go to the local server. Or you can type remote here. You can directly go there. So click anywhere here and then remote, and if you select user, RDP group is the member of this, right? Okay, apply, okay. So RDP group. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so now, if I change it to, so one, so I can log in, second time with different user on the same machine because Windows allowed, this Windows server allowed two users simultaneous access. So ADM SAIF 01, try with this one. Because here admin site senior. So I'm able to log in as an admin site senior, right? 
So now I'm able to log in as the administrative senior. And this one I'm going to log out. Sign out. And LEM save zero one. Okay, keep this one. So I'm creating a duplicate one here. So another one I'm gonna log in as a ADM. David. So David is a junior engineer, junior admin. David zero one. But this is David's administrative account, and this one is Saif administrative account. But Saif zero one is a a uh, senior administrator and David is a junior administrator, right? So double click on it. Oh, somehow this is, this users is not added to the group. Okay, let's see. Go to the properties, see the member server and phone management. Okay, that's cool. And then see the endpoint management, who is the member of endpoint management. System admin junior, okay, that's cool. And then system admin go to the system admin junior. Who is the member of this? Member. Okay, actually this is the wrong. Okay. David Junior, right? System admin junior as a member. Oh, sorry, wrong side. Member. Member of RDP. Endpoint management will be member of RDP. It's a wrong thing. That's why. It's, so, Okay, let's say the RDP, right? So RDP, go to the properties, member. So on the RDP, if you add app and point management, add server management. Okay, so server management apply. Okay. So now if you go to the endpoint management, you will see endpoint management is the member of RDP group. That's what it's mean, right? So now if you go to the endpoint management, Okay, member of, you got this, and members, who is the member of this group? Them. Admin junior, right? Junior, okay. And apply, and okay. 
and system admin junior. If you go to system admin junior, go to the properties, member, sorry, member, David is a member, right? So now this should work. So if you log in, click here. Anyway, let's check check it out, this one. Senior. So senior is working, properties, member. Server. So system admin senior and Saif is the member of this group, right? And, and senior system admin is the member of the server management. That's what it means. And now if you go to the server management, go to the properties and member, you're gonna see system admin junior, a senior, and then member of RDP group. So this is how all this permission is working. I'm going to sign out. Now I'm going to log in. Okay, admin safe. Then I'm going to log in. Okay. So, Okay, let's check the user actually. Maybe I make some mistake with the username. Um, junior, go to the properties, account, REM DAVID 01, copy and paste it here. Okay, and member of, oh, the reason is not, I'm not sure why, is not here. So add system member of is here. Okay. So now it should work. All right, so it's working. So admin, David. So David login as a junior and this one is junior. So now we're gonna see actually what is the difference. So this one we log in as, let's log out from here. David junior, right? But I want to put something to understand better. Sign out. So I can say first one is just a name, right? So it's login as a Saif and this one login as a David, right? David. So now you can understand better, right? So login here, login here. So I'm doing the RDP. And how I'm, I'm able to do the RDP? How I'm able to do the RDP? If you go to the server manager, this is the way. All right. So local server. So if you assign now any domain join computer, how to add a machine with the domain, there's, I have already a video, so you can watch that video. So, Click here. Server manager. Okay. So both user, it the both user doesn't have the permissions. That's why it's looking for this. It, they don't have permissions to see it, right? They just do the RDP on it, right? But how I assign it here? This is the domain controller machine. 
So when I logged in there, I just changed the RDP. Uh, ADMIMS, do you have it? Master. Okay, so remote and select user. So you can say add and then say RDP and check and RDP group, okay. That's how I added this one and okay. So that means what? You are allowing RDP group. So whoever belongs to this group member. So it can have a nested group, nested groups, multiple groups under one group, right? And then all multiple groups can have multiple users. That means all the users who it belongs to those multiple uh, groups and also the parents group is RDP, right? So all groups and all members will have RDP access on this machine. That's how you can assign the RDP. That's how, so RDP enable, how you can do enable the RDP? I show you, must your computer should have remote desktop enabled. This one by default disabled, you have to enable it. And then on the remote section, you have to add the user like this. So this is one way and another way through the um, through RDP, so what is called uh, sorry through the group policy, and also there is another way which is if you go cum computer, if you just type computer, it's gonna give you computer management. Come on, computer management, and if you go to the computer management. So that's the that's alternative one. Local group is groups and go to the administrators. And if you add it here, add say RDP and check. Okay. So this is another way. And then everybody will have access. Whoever is belongs to this group. So belongs to this group means this group can have multiple subgroup. And multiple subgroup can have multiple, multiple users, right? So all of them will have access as a RDP. This is another way. So I'm not going to add this way. So I show two ways and another, the third way is through the GPU. So I'll show you in another video. Anyway, so I'm going to log out here, sign out here, and then I'll log in, log back in again. Okay, now we're gonna learn the delegation. So what kind of delegation are gonna learn? Delegate permissions for domain join allowed domain user to add computer to domain. So now the junior admin or how does people we can assign as endpoint management. That means they can manage laptop, desktop, they can deploy operating system and add that laptop or desktop, which is considered as a workstation, they will be able to join with the domain. And the senior admin, they will have permissions on server management, OU. So that means server management groups will have access on this one uh, here on the server. You see a server here. They will have access on server here. So that means they will be able to add a server with the domain as a client server, right? So that's what we're gonna see right now. So I'm going to, this is, in this machine, this is my active directory, right? In this machine, I logged in as a domain administrator, but he, this is on my jump machine, this one is my jump machine. So, this one my jump machine, just start this. Okay, tools, now I'm going to assign. Okay, so for adding a computer with the domain, so for, say for example, server user, right? So I'm gonna add them, delegate control, right click. So server, so if I assign a group here, that means whoever the whatever the users is belongs to that group or they will have access here here, 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 all sub, 
all 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 sub o u or you can say child o u so if you assign on the parents they will have access on there too so i'm going to add here delegate control click next and then add a group so which group are going to assign server if you guys can if you guys can remember server that means what server management right okay so server management if you look at here so system admin senior is a member of server management and admin saif is a member of system admin senior right so that means if you assign this one automatically if under this group if you have a multiple users all of them will have access here right and if you have a multiple groups like this here and another more groups here so say, say for example like like this you have like this and if all of them has a multiple sub user everybody will have access on this right because they are the member right that's why So add okay. So I have already added here. Click next. Now, what kind of permissions you wanna give them on this folder, on this OU, or on the on this container? So this container is. Uh, just dedicated for a computer object. So we're going to provide them to add a machine with the domain on this computer, this OU, right? So create, create task, click next, and then select this one. And from this one, select computer object and create selected object in this folder. Select um, check mark on here, click next. And then check mark here creation deletion of a specific child object and create all child object create all child object click next and finish so i just provided server manager group so server management group as a delegate delegation control on this ou that means whoever is belongs to this group everybody will have this kind of everyone will, will be able to join the computer right so so Saif senior he is Saif senior now he will be able to create users so how let's see open it how you can open the computer object tools and say uh active directory users and computers and also group policy if you want to open group policy you can click group policy from here so but i already have a um, pin up with both both here so i don't need to go there just click here you're gonna open okay i just make it big for better understanding so now look at uh refresh it so if you go, okay, just refresh this one too on the server level because I just changed the permission and then refresh this one, permission. So this is my jump machine, right? On the jump machine, I logged in as a admin site and let's see what kind of permissions I have as a ad, admin site, ADM site, right? So computer object on server. If you click on computer object, you are not able to see anything. I'll show you the difference. So in this is my Active Directory machine, right? In here, I log in as a domain administrator. So if you click outside of outside anywhere, you're gonna see there is an option called New. And if you click click the New, or if you move the mouse on the New, you're gonna see there's some other options shows computer, contact group, uh, organizational unit, printer, user, share folder, right? A lot of stuff is showing with new options, but in this job machine, when I logged in as a ADM Saif, and if I go select the domain, I, if I right click, I'm not able to see the new option here, right? And also if I go to the built-in option, there's also no new. If I go to the computer object, I'm not able to see new. If I go to the endpoint management, 
I'm not able to see new, but if I go server, right click on it, you see here new, and you're able to see what? Everything here, right? You're able to see everything here, right? And if you click here, and you're gonna see new, you can say computer object, and you can create a computer object, okay. You are able to create it, right? And then delete it, delete it, delete. You are able to delete it, right? So everything you can do as an admin side when you logged in, only this parent folder and under sub all subfolder, you will be able to create a computer object. That means you will be able to join a computer with the domain. So let's see how you can do that. So here is a computer is just newly built. I'm logging this machine as a uh, local administrator, you see here server name with the administrator, that means the local administrator. And this machine is not joined with the domain yet. So the server name is slbpwprbeammst. So this machine I gonna join with ADM Scythe. And let's see ADM Scythe has permission or not. Also, I have a David. So let's try with the David because I didn't provide any permissions to David yet. So let's try with the David first, what it shows. So how are you gonna join a machine with the domain? So you have to log into that new machine and you have to go to the computer name. Definitely you, you should have all those settings like um, IP address and everything and then server name. So go to the server name. This is the way you can add a machine with the domain, right? So domain, domain, and you can say uh, ELS.com, our domain name is ELS.com. Okay. And then you say ADM, D-A-V-I-D, David, 01, add ELS.com. Okay. Just see. So now the computer is added here. If you look at here, we're gonna see the server is added here, right? As a computer object, because by default, when you join a machine with the domain, it should be joined automatically in computer, computer object. So, but think about the user added this machine here the, the that user doesn't have permission on this for you. So later on, if that user login, the user will be able to see, the user will be able to see the computer is there. But if the user wants to move it to here, it, it's not gonna move. It's denied, right? So that user cannot move the machine. Actually, David not supposed to be add the machine with the domain, but before I make this video, I assigned David just for test. So that's why in some way it's still there. That's why David able to add it. Anyway, so you see here, I'm going to remove this one. Okay, let's say login there again. 
if you want to remove it from the domain, what you can do? The same way you can add and delete and remove. So I'm now I'm going to remove it from the domain. So the David Saif, and if you go to the David, the difference between David and Saif. So if you click here, you're not able to see new, right? If you click here, you're not able to see new, right? If you click here, you are not able to see new, right? You're not able to see new, right? But when you log in as a Saif, none of the OU shows new, but only, only the server is showing new options because we delegate the groups here. And Saif belongs to that group. That's why when Saif log in this machine, Saif is able to see this. Not Saif actually, ADM Saif, administrator Saif, right? But when David is logging, he's not able to see anything, right? He's not see anything. He's not see anything here, right? So we're gonna give provide permissions, David, on this OU. Where? On endpoint management. So David gonna can be add any kind of workstation here. So think about David Junior is working as a system admin junior or maybe help desk or maybe some help desk user you can add it here. Some help desk group you can add it here, right? So as a delegation control, you can say next add. Um, you can say endpoint, right? And point. Check endpoint management and also help desk help. Let's see what it shows. You can say help desk junior. Okay. So both groups you are giving permission, delegation permission to add a machine with the domain, computer object with the domain. So select this one, computer object, create. Max, we delete and delete all child. Oh, sorry, get all child objects. Next, and finish. So now just refresh it. Refresh it. Now you're gonna see. Now out. Saif login Saif again. Okay. So you see here. On the endpoint management. David has permission to create a computer object. You can create and also you can delete as a David, right? ADM David. But David doesn't have permission here. If you click right on server, see, there's no new options. It's not showing anything. But Saif, when Saif log into there, ADM admin Saif, right? He's able to see new computer so he can create a computer on this view. so so senior saif administrator can create in in a computer object here and and junior david can create computer object here but when you join a computer with the domain see uh i'll show you how you can remove it from the domain. So I'm going to remove it because I'm gonna re-add it again. So remove it, very simple, just go check on work group and then set anything, anything, whatever you want. It's not important, so you have to have something fixed. Sometimes it will ask you, yeah, user and password, and sometimes it's not. So welcome to this. Now it's gonna be restart, that means it's removed from domain restart it so this machine is removed we add it and we remove it right so if you go back my active directory 
and refresh. Yeah. Refresh it, you're gonna see it's what it shows. It's enable account, it's disabled now, right now. But we are not going to do anything, so I'm going to delay it. Let this update because we already remove it from the domain. So now this this machine is not belongs to domain anymore because we just remove it, right? So I'm going to log back in again as a local administrator and I'm gonna see. So I'm going to tell you again. So if you add any machine with the domain, it's, it's, it doesn't matter with Saif or with David. So David will be able to create a computer object. That's true. It can create anywhere, but if you don't create manually on your or you where you have permission so this is david right so david's supposed to create a computer object here so uh which one you're going to add we're going to add this one right so david's supposed to create the computer object here exactly and then he should go here and then do the process or and Saif supposed to go here where he wants to do that, right? Say for example here, right? It's a production maybe. So he said, if Saif wants to add it, Saif needs to be created, go to the computer and create a computer object manually here. But you cannot because it's already created with David, right? So I'm going to delete the David one. Okay. Okay. Oh, the Saif. So David doesn't have the permission to delete it, right? So I'm going to domain here because I in this machine, I logged in as a administrator. So administrator can do anything just for deleting this one. This one. Delete, yes. Okay, so now go back to here. This now is not gonna show anymore here. Okay, so <clears throat> so Saif is creating user here, new computer object like this. Okay, so why you need to create? Because Saif, Adam Saif knows he has a permissions on those OUs, like parents servers and all sub OUs or child OUs. But if Saif not created this computer object ahead of time and he, if he do this process to add the machine with the domain the way I, we did it previously what gonna be happen the computer object site will be able to add it with the domain but the problem is the computer object will be created by default if you don't do anything manually by default it's gonna become com uh, this OU it's a default OU for computer object but Saif cannot move it. Saif cannot move it to here like this. He cannot move it because it's access denied because Saif doesn't have permissions to move machine from one OU to other OU. So that's why if you think any user has permission in a specific OU and that user needs to be add a machine with the domain, it's, it's mandatory you should create a computer object first and then go to this process, go to this process. ELS.com. So how are we gonna prove now this one will be able to join there? Because if you go here, you just created with the site, right? You just create a computer object. And if you go to the properties, you don't gonna see the DNS name here, but after you com successfully completed, after successfully added the machine with the domain, you're gonna see a DNS name here. So that's what we're gonna prove now. So let's go, okay, and admsaif at els.com and password, okay. Okay, actually, let's start again. ADM SAIF zero one 
okay yes okay and okay and close restart so now this machine is added with the domain and it's just rebooting let's check here let's check here just refresh it uh, click here refresh production machine this one go to the properties you see here dns name is automatically come to here not only that it's created a dns entry what is the dns this is the dns server if you want to see dns from here you can also see dns from here uh i don't know maybe for the dns you have to provide the DNS. you can look at it you can look at okay the dns server this computer okay the following computer so this is the dns server name i'm going to add this one here okay I didn't provide the permissions to Saif. That's why it's showing like this. DNS. Connect to the specific computer. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I have to add Saif to access the DNS. That's why it's showing. You see everything is gray out. Everything is agreed because Saif doesn't have permission. So that is the different delegation. If you want to give them, uh, so I'll show you actually what what it mentioned. So <sighs> delegation control. Click next. Add uh, server management. Right. Server management. Okay. Okay. Next. And then the image scope object, container object, creation. Next. All child next and finish and refresh so if you come here i'm just going to sign out to get the latest update again so just log back in Yeah. Okay, so site was able to successfully add the machine with the domain, which is But now, now how are you gonna assign Saif to create a uh, user? So there's no new, right? So how are you gonna provide the access? Same way, go to the user account, go to the user account, IT stuff, right? So you can add Saif here, or you can add Saif here. If you add here, then he will be able to do anywhere. He will be able to create a user. So right click on it, new computer, uh, sorry, delegation, next, add, say, um, server, change, server management, okay, and click next. And here, create, delete, and manage user account, create, delete, and manage user group, next and finish so 
I just assign here. So if I come here, let's see. Okay, refresh. And uh, see user account. Now anywhere, if I click C, Saif will be able to create a user or group. So for example, here, I just stop, right? Now Saif will be able to create a group or what is the group? But here, it's not, right? So if Saif wants, he can create a user group here. And also he can delete the group, yes. And if he wants to create a user, new user, you can say, okay, next, a password. And finish. So, so I'm able to create a user then delete so i will be able to delete the user right but now we're going to see different thing in the same folder we're going to assign end user measure which is end user measure means junior admin right so say right click on it delegate control next add Uh, so system. Say for example, system admin junior, or maybe uh, end user management, whatever you want. Any group, sorry. So you assign this. Okay, click next, and <clears throat> you can say. account object account object account object and all the way down zero object Oh, organizational unit object, okay. So create selected object in this folder. But delete, no, next. And in here, you can say, just create. Read. Next and finish so now we assign junior admin on here so what they can do let's see so junior is who david is junior right so if you come back here and just refresh it and go to the user accounts now you see new is there so users so david can create a user yes okay let's see what kind of users he can create next and you can say okay we go Okay, so for go IT, right? New user.
So Saif can create a, oh, why it shows? Oh, sorry, sorry, here, David. Okay, it's not a unit. And so uncheck it, let's see, he can delete it or not. So he will be able to create it. So what he created? So, so David is created the OU. And now let's see David can delete it or not. He's not supposed to be deleted. Yes, he cannot delete it. He can create it, but he cannot delete it. But now, if he wants to make him permissions to delete it, then from here, you have to change the permissions, go to the properties, security. You see here, just junior. So now, system admin junior organizational unit, you see here, edit permissions and what it shows. Allow this object and this child object. You can say, okay. So only create organizational object, right? So now you can say delete delete organizational unit and objects. Okay, apply here. Okay, okay. Let's see, refresh. So I'm doing from the domain controller as administrator, domain administrator, and now checking here, actually it's, it's changed the permission of David. So check the David permission here. User account, so he created this, this oh you right let's say delete delete oh still so you have to just change the permission uh, it's just a delegation nothing else actually so you just need to play with it and from the user account maybe you can have like more you can provide the more permissions to them sorry here Let's say sign out, sign out, and log back in again with David. Okay, so if it is not, then Come back on the domain controller. Go to the security system between junior. You can you can provide them here full control. You see, delayed child object. You can do permissions from here also. child object right object apply okay and refresh and come back here just refresh and delete okay still it's not okay it's, it's gonna take time to get the permissions. Okay, so what do you need to do? Right click on it, or you can you can assign delegate control again, because the, the issue happening because of, I added before I made this video, I added the users, so that's why it's giving me a hard time. Uh, no worries about this. If if you use the special permissions, so you have to go through this advanced option, and you see which one. Create computer object.
okay this one right so select this one edit allow full control sell as full control Let's edit. You say full control. That's how you can change also. It depends on you. So as a domain administrator, you give them as access and now you can just refresh it. And go here, refresh here. Let's see. Say uh, user account. Say David gonna create another account. Now I guess you need. Okay, and then try to delete it. Okay, see now David is able to delete it. David is able to delete it. So this is the way you can assign. So now it's up to you. You want to give them use or create a or OU or so I'm going to show you again. You see, you don't have permissions because I am I mean I logged in as a David. So go back to Active Directory as a domain. So here groups and now I'm going to explain all of them together here again. So user group, this is the dedicated for groups, right? So it depends which OU you, you provide what permission. So go to the properties, oh, sorry, not properties actually. Right click, delegation control, next. And you can say add server manage, server management. And, and system admin senior group is a member of this server management group. And uh, ADM SIF is a member of senior group right so that's how SIF has act will be have will have access on this whatever the permission we are going to provide so create delete simply this will give you the create a user user create a user account and for group you see create delete and manage a group if you create just this one then they will have options only the create a groups that's it nothing else and so this one is for create delete user group this one is create delete and manage groups and and if you don't see anything here then you have to go the other option if you go here, here click next so accounts object that means all this belongs to all the accounts computer objects is belongs to all the computer objects right and connection object document object group objects so if you want to provide only the groups this is the groups object if you give them uh, options to have ou organizational user object for user where is the OU we just added OU right organizational or this one organizational unit next and then you can say creation deletion a specific child if you say just only create that means they cannot delete it if you say okay create delete and you can say creation deletion this 
then they will be able to do anything. So I assigned ADM Cypher right on user group. And also I provided multiple, not only group, I have assigned to create a computer OU, to create a user, right? As a, create a computer object, just to see actually how it changed the permission. All right, in here, Okay, still it's not showing. So I have added here, which one? On the user group, right? So user group I have added. If you go to the security, server management, yes. So I have added. Yes, I have added. So why it's not showing here? Let's have a, some refresh on the because it's gonna take a little bit time to sync, right? So this is a jump machine. So jump machine needs to be sync. Whatever the change I have made on the domain controller, right? So you have to give a little bit time to sync it. Now you're, you're able to see, right? Oh, sorry, not this one, there's a group. Still it's not, okay, let's, let's see. Sign out. And sign in back. RDM Sife Senior. Oh, no. Okay, it has a users, printers, organization unit, permissions. So now they can create anything, they can delete it, say computer object, okay, right? Create it and then say delete. Yes, it's deleted and create a uh, I provide them permissions to create and delete everything. So create a user group, group, say like this, and, and say delete it, right click, delete, delete. So this is how actually you can delegate the user permissions through the group. So now we're gonna see, we're gonna, now we're gonna check the group policy. Okay, so now we're gonna check the group policy. Okay, so group policy object. So if you click anywhere, you're gonna see all these options is gray out, right? And this is the main one. If you click here, you're not able to create a new group policy, right? So how are you gonna provide the permissions? So for example, just for defining and see, so we have a two OU, end, endpoint management and uh, server management, right? So you see here, nothing. You see here, nothing. So we're gonna provide David permissions on endpoint management to add uh, to add add them here and create a GPO. Okay. So how are we gonna provide them? So for SIF, admin SIF, we're gonna provide permissions on this object, server object. And David, we're gonna provide permission on here. So let and then see how they can, now everything is gray out, you see? Actually, server has already delegation here. 
that's why it's showing. Okay, remove. All right, so I just deleted because uh, I had some um, access there. So now everything shows there is no permission, right? So we're gonna provide the permission. So for for group policy management delegation is you have to open the group policy management console and then which OU you want to provide which groups. So you have to select the OU, then you have to go to the all the way last tab, which is delegation. And from the delegation, you have to add. So endpoint management, we are going to add um, And endpoint manager, right? So because we know David is a member of this group, right? Actually, David is a member of Junior, and Junior is a member of this group. Okay. This is this container and all child container. Yes, all child. All child. Okay. And then server. In here, we're gonna provide permissions, um, delegation to server admin, which is server, uh, server management. So server management, um, system admin, senior group is a member of server management and SIF, uh, ADM SIF, that means admin SIF is a member of Senior admin group. So that's how SAIF will have access here. Okay, container, that's it. And now just refresh it and come here and refresh. Now you can right click on it and you see, now SAIF will be able to link the GPO, link an existing GPO block inheritance, but SAIF cannot create the GPO here. Same thing, if you look at here, refresh it. Input, and so now this is David. So David cannot see anything. David cannot link any GPU on this OU, but David can link the GPU here. On the other hand, Saif cannot add any GPU on this C, everything is gray out. So this is the difference. And now, how you can create 
as a SIF, you can create a GPO. So for creating a GPO, you have to have a permissions here. If you click here, it's a group policy object. And you see group policy creator owner. So you can create a GPO or you can delete a GPO. So I'm not gonna give any user to delete it just for creating, right? So now for providing the permissions to save, you don't need to, if you go to the properties and member, you see here, if you can add, if you can add um, server, server management group, so whoever is belongs to this group, you, we know SAIF is in, belongs to this group, right? Because how? Because SAIF is a member of uh, system admin senior group and system admin senior group is a member of server management group. Now server management is gonna be a member of this group, right? This group. So now if you refresh it, now go back to SAIF, and right click. So Saif cannot create, right? Saif cannot create a GPU, right? But if you do go here, refresh, a new still is not showing. Why? Okay, just give me some few minutes to create. Uh, here okay just add you can do you can do okay you can say or you can say add server management advance you don't need to go actually advance okay all right. Now you will be able to create, create the GPU. Okay, you just created, right? You can create a GPU here, right? But you can create two, right? And you can able to delete it. And you'll be able to delete it, but I don't want to give you the permission as a delete. Just create permission. So in that case, I have to take out. So you understand, right? The SAIF now able to only add here. You see here, add, create, link, and block, right? So create, link, and block. And also SAIF have permission here, new, backup, and management, right? But any GPU here, say for example this one, under the server, so I've created one GPU. So from here, when you create a GPU in any folder, it's gonna be automatically created here. So you can back up, you can back up the GPU, but other one, also you can back up. But you cannot delete because this one is not you are the you are not the creator creator you are just only the creator of this one so you see if you want to delete okay let's say delete this one you are not creator but delete this one access is denied because you are not the creator of this you are not the creator of this that's why you will not be able to delete it but you just only able to do what the one you created. You are the creator of this one, right? You can edit it, you can delete it, you can back up, you can restore, you can do everything with this one, the one you just created. Yes, it's remove, right? It's new, okay, and then delete. Uh, if you want to join this one, okay, before I delete, I want to show you, if you want to join this one with any one of the OU, you can say right click, you can say, 
uh, link the GPU and this is the GPU the one you created, right? Okay. And also you'll be able to create join any other GPU, link other GPU, which are not created by you, but still you can join it. So now if you look at here, group policy, you're gonna add, you see the your GPU, right? So, but this one is created by you, uh, which one? This one, right? So this one, you can delete it anytime. So you can delete it from here, like, like this. You can delete from here or you can delete because whenever you create something in a folder, automatically whoever is created, whatever the folder, it doesn't matter. Everything gonna be created here. It's gonna pop up here on the list and then delete it. So this is how you can provide the permission. So if you want anybody to give permissions to their specific OU to create a uh, computer object, so just select the computer group policy object and delegation and add their group, that's it. Nothing else. And for a specific OU, provide the permissions. Just select it, go to the delegation, and then add it. That's it. So that's all for today. That's all for today. And I believe you guys understand. It's a long video, I know, uh, but for understanding the delegation is very important for a system admin life. So I hope uh, you guys understand and enjoy this video. And if you like this video, please give a big thumbs up and also don't forget to make some comments which uh, because your comments in, is encouraging me to make more videos for you guys. And also if you got, if anybody is new to my channel, please subscribe my channel and thank you. Thanks for watching this video.